Hello everyone, we will continue the topic parallel processing and in the previous videos we understood the full concept of parallel processing and we did the practical of the same. Now into this particular video, we will cover the various challenges and what are the various best practices of the parallel processing. Generally, every interviewer asks this question. Okay, you did the practical of the parallel processing. You performed this particular scenario, but at that time, what are the various things you kept in the mind whenever you did this particular scenario? So into this particular video, we will simply cover what are the various challenges when you do the parallel processing and what are the various best practices we need to follow whenever we are going for parallel processing. Because parallel processing is best suitable whenever you have large amount of data, whenever you have complex scenarios, but we need to go for so many considerations whenever we go for parallel processing. So what are the various challenges and what are the various best practices we will cover into this video. And it is very easy to understand at this point of time because we already covered the practical. Because now we have the practical knowledge. So it's very easy to relate the things. Now the first challenge which we face in parallel processing is uneven distribution of load. Sturm itself is suggesting, yes, the load is not even. We will understand by example. In parallel processing, what we are doing? We are dividing a big task into small, small tasks and we will assign it to work process. Suppose whenever you divided the big task into small, small tasks, at that time, load is not even. Suppose if we will go for our example. In our example, what we did? We divide our big task into 12 small, small tasks. Now, suppose when we divide into 12 small tasks, at that time, one task has too much load and one task has very less load. Will we get the benefit of parallel processing? We will not get the benefit of parallel processing because one task has this much load. The task is going on, going on, going on. Suppose if I will go for simple example. In our current scenario, we divided our big task into 12 months. Suppose from 1st April to 30th April, thus there is, there is very less load on the system. Yes, there are very less sales order in that particular month. And between 1st May to 31st May, there is a huge number of sales order. Then in that case, what will happen? From 1st April to 30th April, that task in a fraction of second will give the result. From 1st May to 31st May, it will take too much time to give the result. So whenever we are going for parallel processing, we need to check for the distribution of the load. Yes, suppose in our current scenario, if we know because customer know the sequences, yes, if customer know that in this particular quarter or in this particular month, there is very less load on the system or in this particular quarter or in this particular month, there is big load on the system. So the, we need to check that this at this point of time, there is very much big load. So we need to divide the task based upon that only. So first, the challenge is in case of parallel processing, we divide a large task into multiple subtasks. And because of that, Sometimes we face the challenge of uneven distribution of load. Yes, we suppose example, if a task is too large, it will continue for a long time and we will not get the benefit of parallel processing. So whenever you are going for parallel processing, please check 
that there must be even distribution of load across multiple tasks. It should not be the case. One task is going on, going on, going on. And one task is simply giving the result in fraction of second. Then at that time, but the best practice we need to follow, load must be evenly distributed across multiple tasks. Janil, every interview, interviewer asks, yes, you did the parallel processing, but what the best practice you did at that point of time? Because if we will not follow the best practice, we will not get the result of parallel processing. Now we will go for next challenge. Now, what is the next challenge? Our next challenge is data inconsistency. Many times, if we will go for parallel processing, it leads to data inconsistency also. Suppose if we will go for simple examples. In our current scenario, what we did, we divide the big task into 12 small, small tasks. What is our first task? 1st April to 30th April. What is our second task? 1st May to 31st May. Now suppose our third task is also 1st May to 31st May. Suppose our fourth task is also 1st May to 31st May. Then in that case, what is happening? Your multiple subtasks are accessing to the same set of data. So at the last, you have a data inconsistency. So whenever you are going for parallel processing, just make sure whatever the tasks are there, their data is independent. Yes, in our current scenario, we followed this practice. 1st April to 30th April, first task. First task, 1st May to 31st May, second task. 1st June to 30th June, third task. 1st July to 31st July, fourth task. Because if the if because if the tasks are not independent, it means multiple tasks are accessing the same set of data, and result is always always leads to data inconsistency and happens many times. Many times, what will happen? We'll simply write the logic, and multiple subtasks are accessing the same set of data. No, whenever we are going for parallel processing. Each and every task must be independent. They must have the access of independent set of data because they are assigning to a different work process. Then what is the meaning that multiple work process are working on same set of data? So what is our second challenge? The parallel processing might lead to data inconsistency if multiple tasks access the same data at the same time. Then in that case, what will, what is the best practice? Your parallel task must be independent of each other. It means they should not require simultaneous access to same set of data. Now we will go for third challenge and what is the solution for the same. And third is the most, most important challenge in any interview. If you tell this particular challenge, interviewer can easily understand that you have a knowledge on parallel processing. Increases system load. We always say parallel processing increase the performance, increase the performance, but it can lead to drastically system load also. It gives it too much pressure on the system. We'll simply, simply understand. In case of parallel processing, what we are doing? We are assigning the task to the individual work processes. Just think, we blindly divided the program, divided the task into 12 subtasks. And what will happen? System will simply assign the task to the work processes. Suppose if there are there is no 12 work processes in the system, it means what will happen at that point of time? It will lead to a drastic system load. Suppose you assign a task to the work process. 
and work process is not available at that point of time. So it is a performance bottleneck at that point of time. The resource is unavailable. We are simply, simply waiting for the resource. Then we will not get the performance. It will lead to a performance bottleneck. If you remember when we did the practical, I showed you SM50 transaction code. Check the number of work processes. Based upon that only, we need to decide the number of parallel tasks. So whenever you are going for parallel processing, this is extremely, extremely important point, which we need into consideration. So if I will read the theory, while parallel processing improve the performance, but it can increase the load on the system. Suppose if you're going for too many parallel tasks, so at that time, work processes are not available. If work processes are not available, then who will perform the task at that point of time? So then it will lead to performance bottleneck. Then what is the best practice we need to follow? Based upon your system capacity, you need to decide the parallel task. Suppose if you have 20 or 25 work processes, then we need to check, yes, if these are the users, then we should only go for 10 or 12 based upon the system capacity because other users will also work at that point of time. Now, if you have long running process, then you can go for background jobs. You all know in SM50, I showed you that we have the work processes for the background jobs. We have a separate work processes for background job. You can see for background job. If you think we can shift that particular parallel task to background because in that case, what will happen? It will not intervene the work processes which are in foreground at that point of time, which are in dialogue at that point of time. Now the third I already covered you need to use the system monitoring tool SM50. Just check in SM50 what are the various work processes available. Based upon that, you need to decide your parameters. Based upon that, you need to decide, yes, this is the way how I can go. Now, we will move on to next challenge. And the next challenge is error handling. And this is the most, again, important challenge, yes. Suppose in case of parallel processing, what you are doing, we are dividing a task into small, small tasks. And we need to do the error handling for all the subtasks. Now, it is not the case that we have a single task. We have small, small tasks. It means we need to do the error handling for each and every task. There must be a logging process. Logging process means this task successful, this task unsuccessful because at the last, if some task is failed, we need to manage those tasks properly. So in case of parallel processing, you cannot skip error handling because error handling must be done for each and every individual task. So at that time, what the best practice we can follow? We will go for all the test scenarios. We'll check for all the error cases. This is the best practice we need to follow. Now, if I will go for conclusion, this paragraph has each and everything for our huge topic of parallel processing. Parallel processing is a very powerful concept because we can increase the performance whenever we have complex operation and large data. And it is widely used in the projects whenever we have large amount of data and complex scenarios. Even SAP used parallel processing and at lots of places. You can divide the load among multiple work processes. Yes, we can reduce the execution time and improve the performance but you need to take care of these things. What are the needs you need to take care? You need to check that each and every task must be independent. We need to go for resource management. Means if we have this much work processes are there, we need to go for the work processes less than that only. Based upon the system resource, 
we need to go for the number of tasks now we need to do the effective error handling and if i will add one more task one more thing also ensure task independent and i will just add one thing here we need to go for proper distribution of load so i will add one more thing here add to it we must go for careful planning to ensure task independent proper load distribution proper load distribution so what is the summary of this particular video again this video why it is important because you explain the practical scenario but interviewer many times ask parallel processing does not give every time good performance if we are not following the best practices so what are the various best practices you followed or what are the various challenges when you did the parallel processing so first is uneven distribution of load in parallel processing we divide a large task into small small tasks so it might be the case our load is not distributed evenly then in that case we will not get the benefit of parallel processing because if load is not evenly distributed one task will take too much time one task will take less time and result will be because at the last we need to collect the result for all the parallel tasks but one task is going on going on going on so we will not get the benefit of parallel processing then what the best practice load must be evenly distributed across multiple tasks now but the next challenge data inconsistency your each and every task is independent it means they must have access to independent set of data because if they will go for same set of data it means it will leads to data inconsistency so what the best practice go for your each and every task must be independent they should not access the same set of data at the same time third case yes you need to increase system load yes the third challenge is increase system load if you are not going or you are not checking the resources of the system it will lead to performance bottleneck and resources will be unavailable suppose if a system has 20 work processes and you divide into suppose 18 19 work processes it might be the case you will not get the work process at that point of time because other users are also working so check the system resources you need to check the system capacity if you think no this much parallel task is required to shift into background at that point of time yes now you can go for sm50 which is an important tool you can check or use performance tool sm50 monitoring tool sm50 sorry this is a monitoring tool sm50 with the help of this you can check and you can plan accordingly in case of this parallel processing we need to do the error handling for each and every individual task this is again one of the challenge yes and how you can go for best practice thoroughly check each and every scenario go for each and every test case now but the main conclusion is it has everything it's a powerful technique to improve the performance whenever you have complex scenario and large data set because we will get the good performance. But the various things we need to keep in mind that each and every task must be independent. There must be proper load distribution. There must be system resource management. And we need to do the effective at the end. So that's it in this video. Thank you.